So this is a talk on Einstein's relativity from perspective of Boscovich's theory and it's an extended talk. The, the original talk was shorter and delivered at Athens Science Conference in 2019. I'll be going into extra detail in this talk. Einstein's paper on special relativity was 1905. It was called on the electrodynamics of moving bodies and it has no references or citations of what Einstein was working from. Uh, so it can give the false impression that it springs from Einstein's imagination alone through his thought experiments. Uh, and I propose that it didn't come that way. Instead, it came from a long tradition prior to 1905. And the correct way to understand relativity is via Boscovich's theory. Boscovich's theory was 1758 and is now generally missed out of physics education system. Now this is a picture of Max Born. He's one of the friends of Einstein and he tells us it, as in special relativity and the rest of Einstein's relativity, gives you the impression of quite a new venture but that is of course as I tried to explain not true so he's admitting that Einstein was working from an earlier tradition of relativity and so basically just need to know what that tradition was so Galileo talked to relativity and between him and Einstein there were others who dealt with the relativity issue, but most get ignored and they're overshadowed by Einstein. I have gone back to the original German when Einstein first talks to special relativity in 1905. And I found what I think is a better translation. The usual translation is by these people Perrett and Jeffrey, and I'm going to note that is OEM, the original paper on electrodynamics. I will contrast that with a better translation by Crackler, and I will denote him by AFK. Uh, as per the June 2019 issue of Physics World, it explains that when Einstein was in Oxford, England, uh, this is uh, before World War Two, I think, uh, Einstein lectured in German and not in English. He wasn't fluent in English and because he was speaking German, his audience had difficulty understanding him. Uh, ideally, Einstein should have clarified things in his papers and so forth but he, and that does not seem to happen and he seems to have relied on translators and didn't check things he's he's he was too busy on other things probably like politics now in section 10 of the usual translation let there be in motion in an electromagnetic field an electrically charged particle in the sequel called an electron for the law of motion of which we assume as follows whereas uh, the other translation by Crackler has it as suppose the electromagnetic field acts on a point particle with charge epsilon hereafter denote is an electron for which the following laws govern its motions are so the main difference is the afk version is talking of a point particle 
and the original the usual translation is not talking about a point particle so that's quite a big change there and I'm highlighting the change here and if you're looking at the original German it's this German word which probably chats best as point like and particle so that's probably translated best as point particle the usual translation uh, thus emits saying point particle and in various places the term material point is used within the paper and that's another way of saying point particle thus Einstein's paper on special relativity is dealing with point particles point particle is the theory of Newton and is developed further by Boscovich. Basis of, basis of Einstein's 1905 paper on special relativity is the Boscovich Newton point particle theory. So now we have a connection to special relativity from an earlier tradition. It's to do with point particles. Einstein's paper is on point particles. Based on the usual translation, not everyone has concluded that special relativity was dealing with point particles, i.e. a bad translation of his paper has omitted about it being about point particles. Now, the relevant book on Boscovich theory, which I go by, is by this person, Dragoslav. and he gives us this sort of thing the hierarchy of matter you have molecules and you go down further you look on a smaller scale you have atoms you go down further and eventually you get to elementary points the point particle and the forces involved on these particles is obeying what is called the Boscovich curve So you have uh, forces acting between particles obeying uh, Boscovich's curve. You have the electron uh, having a force with the atomic nucleus, forces acting as per Boscovich curve, and you have atoms acting together with each other by Boscovich curve, and all these other particles. Uh, and the relevant book is. Uh, Roger Boscovich, the founder of modern science, which goes into more detail about this, uh, by Jack or Staff. I also have a paper by Augustus Prince. It's entitled Analytical Form of the Boscovich Curve with Applications. It's gone into a lot more detail about the maths. So Going back to comparing translations, uh, in the usual translation, it says the laws by which the states of physical systems undergo change are not affected, whether these changes of state be referred to the one or the other of two systems of coordinates in uniform translatory motion. And the other translation by AFK, it says the laws according to which the states of physical systems change are to be independent of which of two uniformly moving coordinate systems to which the physical system is referred. These are the same similar things. And in the context of this, we must be dealing with point particles. It's going down further and when it refers to uniform which we should know can apply to acceleration so you've got uniform equations of motion of Newton it has not been clear to people that special relativity is dealing with acceleration as well as speed 
of point particles. And these, these are the equations of uh, Newtonian physics dealing with uniform motion for point particles. We have V as final velocity, U as initial velocity, A as acceleration, and T as the time involved, and S is the displacement. So from earlier, we're noting that Newtonian equations of motion are really what have been applied to in special relativity. Now, moving on to the next part, we have the usual translation as saying, let us take a system of coordinates in which the equations of Newtonian mechanics hold good. And in the footnote is got IE to the first approximation. So it's talking about an approximation. While in the AFK translation, uh, it's saying much the same thing, but there's no footnote. So the AFK translation is saying there is no approximation involved. You are dealing with Newt Newtonian's equations. Whereas in the usual translation, it, it's trying to fudge it by saying it's an approximation. So the first, I'm highlighting the difference, the first is stating Newtonian physics, which I'm denoting NP, is an approximation of special relativity, um, which, which I denote special relativity by SR. So Newtonian physics NP is approximately equal to SR in the usual translation. What in the other translation, Newtonian physics NP equals SR. And that's quite a difference. You've got two different theories. You've got a theory from the usual translation, which is different to the better translation. AFK is a better translation and it's saying NP equals SR instead of saying NP approximately equals SR. The footnote in the usual translation is added without any justification being given. It's not in the original German of which Einstein was writing. So really, Einstein's paper in German, the original in German, 1905, has NP equals SR. And he does not have NP as an approximation of SR. It's only the bad translation that has changed it to having NP as an approximation, approximation of SR. In the original German, NP equals SR. Newtonian physics equals special relativity. So, However, most people would think Newtonian physics and SR are not the same thing, mainly because of things like time dilation. And that's an issue I will come back to. For the moment, I am pointing out special relativity is really Boscovich Newtonian physics. It's been a bad translation of Einstein's 1905 paper, and that has obscured the fact that Einstein is talking about Boscovich Newtonian physics dealing with point particles. And also, you could also say, well, the maths is a bit bad as well. There's mistakes in Einstein's maths. But mainly in this talk, I am pointing out it's the bad translation of the paper which has given the false impression of what Einstein is talking about in 1905. So getting on to the issue of some of the maths, 
mathematics. In the, in the usual translation, it says, in agreement with experience, we further assume the quantity to be a universal constant, the velocity of light in empty space. Now, the better translation, AFK, translates as, further we take it that the quantity is a universal constant, the two-way speed of light in empty space. Now, he's got two-way in square brackets. Einstein does not say two-way. And if you look at what he's saying, it makes sense that he is talking about the two-way speed of light, but that is an inference and not being explicitly stated by Einstein. Also, you would note the usual translation says velocity of light, or the better translation says the speed of light. Now, the German word that is being used can translate either into the English of velocity or into the English of speed. And velocity and speed are not quite the same thing. Velocity is a vector which is uh, direction and speed, while speed is a scalar and is, does not give you a direction. So they are not quite the same thing. So the better translation is pointing out we should really be talking about speed of light instead of velocity of light. Plus you should also be talking about two-way speed of light. And the equation it's given is below there. And I'm going down here into breaking the difference down. Uh, it's velocity of light, not speed. It's a problem the German word that can translate to either. And that's the point being made there. You should really be talking about speed of light instead of velocity. Now, the AFK translation, which is the better translation, I'm contrasting with the usual translation here. Emphasize the difference. You need to change it to speed. You need to change it to, sp to speed. And write down here, the usual translation I've corrected to say the speed of light in empty space. So it now reads, in agreement with experience, we further assume the quantity to be a universe constant, the speed of light in empty space, rather than talking about velocity. But you've still got the issue of the square brackets where it's two way. As I'm pointing out here now, AFK interprets as talking about two way. Whereas the usual translation, there's no mention of this. So the usual translation is given the impression that he's talking about one way light speed, one way light speed. So you've got the issue here of interpreting what Einstein is saying as dealing with one way light speed or as dealing with two way light speed. In the usual translation, you could be mistaken to interpret it as he's talking about one-way light speed when the better translation, I think it's two-way light speed. If you're talking about two-way, it makes it more in line with Newtonian physics. So I deem it's a mistake to think it is one-way. Thus from two-way, Giving a person first observing light going one direction with speed c minus v, uh, and then rebound and go back with speed c plus v. So what I'm talking about here is light traveling a certain distance, hitting a mirror, and then getting reflected back. Now, if that mirror is 
if you if you if you got the light source in a moving body and with the mirror moving along with that body then a person outside that will be observing uh, the light going with speed c minus v in one direction and then get rebounded with speed c plus v in the other direction and that's what you get from newtonian physics using the normal addition of speeds as per newton and that's for when v is greater than zero then c minus v is less than c and c plus v is greater than c i.e the one way speeds can be less than or greater than c while two-way uh, light speed is formed from the average of the one-way light speed if you add c plus v speed to the c minus v speed and divide by two you end up with c and that would be the two two-way light speed as c you've got the one-way light speed as being c plus v or c minus v and you've got the two-way light speed as being c c is a constant in two-way light speed thus still have newtonian physics one-way light speed is not constant you just got this strange invention of two-way light speed being introduced and when we look at the maths uh, before what, what AFK is talking about, he seems justified in making the interpretation that Einstein is talking about two-way light speed. Just Einstein did not use that terminology in his paper. Einstein did not say two-way light speed. It's just that we look at his paper now and decide that's what he must have been talking about. Now, moving on to the time dilation equation we have uh, t prime is equal to t divided by this uh, thing underneath when the belief was that newtonian physics np is an approximation of sr this equation was believed to be sr and then as v tends to zero when when v is much less than c then that approximates to newtonian physics mp so that is the belief then it's believed that as v tends to zero that equation becomes a newtonian physics equation and that that is the belief when you're saying that Special relativity is uh, approximately equal to Newtonian physics. So, when you're doing it from the correct interpretation of Newtonian physics equals special relativity, MP equals SR, this equation is a Newtonian physics equation. That equation is Newtonian physics. It's not an issue of it approximates to Newtonian physics as V tends to zero. It is that equation is Newtonian physics. Now, if we go back to Newton, he does have variable time. Isaac Newton founded classical physics on the view that space is distinct from body and that time passes uniformly without regard to whether anything happens in the world. For this reason, he spoke of absolute space and absolute time. So he distinguished these entities from the various ways by which we measure them, which he called relative spaces and relative times. And that's a quote from the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. So, according to Newton, it's okay to have the time dilation equation. As well as absolute time, he can accommodate relative time. It's just a question of how you're going to form that equation from what Newton's talking about. 
Now, there are other mistranslation problems, such as the one spotted in American Journal of Physics 31, uh, volume 31, I think it is, in 1963. The passage is, but it's not possible with, without further assumption to compare in respect of time an event of A with an event at B with we have so far defined only the A time and a B time. We have not defined a common time for A and B. For the latter cannot be defined at all unless we, unless we establish by definition that the time required by light to travel from A to B equals the time it requires to travel from B to A. So you're moving, lights moving from A to B, it takes a certain amount of time and then if light is traveling the other way from B to A, it's taking a certain amount of time as well. There are even problems in the mistranslation of Newton, as noted in the plea for a correct translation of Newton's laws uh, in American Journal of Physics, noted in 1960. We'll pass on that for the moment, I think. I think that these mistranslations have obscured many concepts in physics, and really there should be discussion of Boscovich's theory, a theory of point particles with action and distance by fields, and particles not coming into contact. That's in Boscovich's theory. If thinking in terms of mechanism particles interacting by contact, on contact, then that seems to be the Lissage theory and further developments in that. Boscovich's theory used to be taught until Newton, until sorry, Einstein and quantum, quantum evolution, then it was dropped to make room for them. So development of physics lost to those that are taught physics nowadays. Conclusions. Looking at Einstein's 1905 paper from a context of an existing tradition working on similar themes and we get a relativity that is quite a bit different to the one that we are usually presented with. Conclusions further, Einstein's innovation was supposed to be dealing with lightest particles in his 1905 paper on the photoelectric effect. Light was being dealt with, with as a wave and Einstein reintroduced the old idea of particles from Newton. This led to wave particle duality concept of quantum mechanics. Einstein's 1905 paper on the photoelectric effect dealt with part lightest particles. Eventually, this combined with the wave theory of light to give wave particle duality concept of quantum mechanics. So, from this analysis, it has not been properly appreciated that Einstein's two papers of 1905, that on uh, the paper on the photoelectric effect and the paper on relativity, were both dealing with lightest particles, i.e. his relativity and what becomes quantum physics reunified in that they are both based on particles. That was the end of the Athens, Athens talk. Uh, now dealing with extra Now, there are many types of ether theory, but an ether point particles is never disproved. And sometimes people say that general relativity brings back a type of ether by its treatment of space time. People usually interpret Einstein's paper 1905 as discarding the ether. But in 1920, he seems to be Einstein seems to be bringing back the ether, and he gave this in a dress he made in May 1920 to the at the University of Leiden. So, an ether of point particles still makes sense within the point particle theory of Boscovich Newton. And that is the context of which I'm saying Einstein is talking about.
and this book Einstein in the Ether by Ludwig Kostre goes into quite a lot of detail by what Einstein meant by Ether. Einstein seems to have had changing uh, opinions about what the Ether was and Kostre goes into a lot of detail about that. Briefly now deal with general relativity. When I have looked at Einstein's theory of relativity from his 1905 paper I've been unhappy with it and I went back to the original German and did not agree with how it was translated into English. I have now two translations of that paper to compare and Einstein's theory is different in different translations, even the math is different. My proposal is that the correct way to understand Einstein's relativity is from the context of Boscovich's theory. Einstein's general relativity is usually thought of as uh, space-time curvature geometry of that but there are people who think that is not what Einstein meant. I have this paper here uh, studies in history and philosophy of science and the person here Dennis is saying I argue that contrary to folklore Einstein never really cared for geometricizing the gravitational or subsequently the electromagnetic field. Indeed, he thought that the very statement that general relativity geometricizes uh, gravity is not saying anything at all. So when you're talking about that, it's not from that interpretation, Einstein is not dealing with space-time curvature. That is an unnecessary way of thinking about it. If, however, you are interested in space-time curvature, there are talks that show that Newtonian physics can be formulated in space-time curvature context. And I cite these here. And it's a So development of Einstein's relativity from its Newtonian beginnings is not clear. Now, some people think Einstein denied existence of absolute time, but he does talk of a common time and that might be related. In the In the uh, usual translation of Einstein, it says we have not defined a common time for A and B, so forth. Uh, for the latter cannot be defined at all unless we establish by de definition that time required by light to travel from A to B equals the time it requires to travel from B to A. However, this is a mistranslation. In the better translation by AFK, it says can now be defined in terms of, of the time. It's in the in the usual translation, it's saying cannot and, and be defined at all unless. So that's the difference. Note the difference as highlighted. Universal time is a time standard based on Earth's rotation, and I'll quote on this from Wikipedia. It's a modern continuation of Greenwich Mean Time. So you do have a thing called universal time, and universal time implies a universal frame, similar to the concept of an absolute frame, i.e. is a defined frame similar to uh, universal or absolute. So Einstein is talking about a common time and that is a universal time.
or could be understood to be in a universal time or in other words could be thought of as an absolute time thank you finish the end <laughs>